there, welcome. Welcome to Home Keepers. Oh, I'm so glad to be with you today and glad you're there. Hope you're looking at this gorgeous new cup brought to me my, by my guest today, Kathleen McInair Smith, who has written this book, Beyond Broken Families. Uh, one interesting book, let me tell you. And when you hear her, you will truly believe she's from England. But the truth is she was born in the United States, but has lived, she lives on one continent for a few months and then she comes back here. But she sure picked up that British accent and this looks very much like that beautiful Royal Albert um, China, which I've always loved. And I'm just delighted to have a real true English teacup and saucer. My mom was born in England and I have a great feeling for those people. So thank you so much, Kathleen. I'm anxious to introduce you to her and this book she has written. A very, very, very interesting life and I'll let you hear it from her. And I'm going to join Stephanie with a recipe I think subconsciously I've looked for for a long time. Do you ever sit down and eat one of those salads that's just pure crunch, just crunch, 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 and quite good for you, actually. And so we have uh, one of those that we're going to put together for you. And I want to, again, offer you this book because we're going to be talking about marriage and so forth. And we have offered this before, Finding Your Million Dollar Mate. And this is uh, yours for the asking. If you would uh, send us a gift through the mail, or if you would um, like to send an offering through the 800 number, 1-800-229-0059, um, that would be fine. But write to me at Home Keepers, Box 6922, Clearwater, Florida, 33758. Uh, it's not a frivolous book. It was written by a very, um, very, very successful pastor and probably came out of his own experience in his own church. And so I've joined Stephanie over here and talking about mates. This was in yesterday's paper, my hometown communist paper, I call it. <laughs> <laughs> if you had it, you, you'd understand uh -huh. why. But I need oh, it. I, get it. I need it for things like yes. this for my work. Okay, this has to do with dating and money. And it says, two researchers at the University of Michigan have done work that sheds light on how fundamental consumption behavior, spending and saving decisions, influences the formation of romantic relationships. And the desire actually uh, tends more toward the person who saves mm -hmm. and is more frugal. And I got to thinking about that. I thought, you know, what if I met some guy, I'm head over heels in love, and he's got this ton of debt. And he just spends and spends and spends. You don't want Red that. flag. Yes. Yeah, because, red flag. Yeah, so, scary. Uh, anyway, in this day and age, we get the research from every angle. I thought that was pretty interesting, actually. You can Google somebody and find out everything, so. <laughs> <laughs> That's scary. <laughs> that is scary. This is called a Oriental ramen broccoli cold salad yes and i know small. i've eaten it somewhere mm -hmm. so i'll do this okay you're gonna you have a three course three three quarter cup of oil you have a third a cup of white vinegar and a half a cup of sugar that you're gonna put together mm -hmm. i have ramen noodles you know these are you can get these free with coupons usually so this oh, is a really? nice yes these you can usually buy uh get buy one get one free so you've got a pretty cost effective salad here and this is the beef flavor, and it says to put this beef packet in yeah, this. Yeah, I have another one for you, too. Okay. There you go. So I've, we've crushed these up. Which makes me think this could be a pretty interesting flavor we're coming up yeah. with here. So I'm just going to put both of these in the bottom of the bowl. You know, I've never bought these noodles in my life. <gasps> really? My daughter, they're, you know, they're full of sodium. They are full of sodium. Really? But my daughter loves them for, like, an after school while she's doing Well, it her has homework. to be the cheapest meal in the it, whole wide world. That, that's why college students, this is their, their go-to meal. So I have two of those. I have um, two bags of the broccoli slaw. Mm -hmm. We're just going to put that over. Well, this got kind of glazed over at the top. 
And then I have um, sunflower Those are sunflower seeds, seeds yes. a whole cup. Yep. This okay. is nothing but crunch. Yeah, it's good. Good stuff. We have slivered almonds. Mm -hmm. This is probably the most expensive thing you'd buy for this whole entire... <laughs> Little dab of almonds. Yeah. I want to get a spoon and taste that dressing. And then I also have um, a bunch of green onions that you should grow in your own kitchen. Yeah. Which my friend here, Stephanie, does. I do. I do. Every penny counts. Yes. Well, back to our newspaper article. If, yes. Okay, you're, you're dating this guy, and I mean, he is, he's hunk, you know. <laughs> uh, do you think your common sense would rule your I heart? I would hope so at this point, but I'm telling you, you know, when you're young and in love, there is no common sense. <laughs> when you're young and in love, look in their eyes, no one's home. Yeah. How is the, how's the sauce? Oh, that's good. That that's is good. good. So we're just going to pour this over. In fact, I think I have looked for that combination of uh, ingredients for dressing before, and I didn't know what I was looking mm. for. Now, you should really let this chill for a mm -hmm. while. Everything will marry up and everything, but we'll go ahead and mix it okay. up a little it bit. It says to um, let it chill. Up to 24 hours. Because so like, it won't get soggy. No. It gets nice and yummy. Yeah, let's I'm turn it around a quite a bit. bit. for you. Yeah. Need to uh, mix it up. I think this is a. Here, you want me to put a little on a plate? Or I think this a is little? a recipe I could use. And you want you want to? Oh, that's a lot. You oh, want to uh, <laughs> toss it a lot and chill it. And chill it, uh -huh. yeah, because the ramen noodles really need to soak for a little bit. Oh my! Because they're really, really, really oh my. crunchy right now. That is my is good? kind of thing. Yeah. Nice. Mm -hmm. So we'll stick that in the fridge, and if you want this. Trust me, you want this one. Mm -hmm. um, that information is coming up on your screen. <clears throat> and then I want you to be sure and meet my guest, Kathleen McInair Smith. McInair, that must be <laughs> Scottish or something. I'll ask her. Stay with us. If you would like a copy of today's recipe, please send your request along with a gift of $5 or more to Homekeepers, P.O. Box 6922, Clearwater, Florida, 33758. All right, I want you to meet my guest. Uh, pleased to let you know that I said McInerney, right? Is that Scottish? It's Irish. Irish, okay. Irish. Actually, Northern Irish, mm -hmm. up near Bangor, Northern Ireland. Mm. Well, now, you have lived... Uh, both continents for a long time, but you definitely have a English accent. You know, I think that comes from having children. And my husband and I have six of them between us, and mine are always mummy. Well, one is a mummy and one's a mom. We don't say it like that. And so day after day, when you're corrected, you begin to get in line. <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, yeah. I want to welcome you. She lives on two continents, kind of 50-50. We were doing 50-50, but I'm about to be a grandma, and I'm so excited that mm -hmm. I think it's going to be a bit more... Uh, that'll uh, you make know. a difference, <laughs> yeah. and that's in England. That's in England, in London, actually, yes. Uh, you've been involved in community development and the Peace Corps, yes. which was established by President John Kennedy. Right. What did you do in the Peace Corps? I was in community development, and I was a teacher. I worked with Rastafarians. That's, really? Where? Yes, that was in Jamaica, Keep, Jamaica over 30-something years. Maybe it was 40 years ago. You uh, worked with Rastafarians? I did, yes. Uh, it was very interesting because, obviously, uh, they want you to believe what they believe in, which is that Haile Selassie was Christ come again. Mm -hmm. And so we had to seriously agree to disagree. And I could serve them in the name of Jesus by establishing a school, which was based on, you know, teaching math, very basic math, believe me, that's not my subject, mm -hmm. and English and reading. And one night I had a lovely um, elderly woman come to the back door of the school and she says, only Rastafarians in this school? I said, no, ma'am. I said, this school is, is open for everyone. And she held up her Bible, which was no bigger than my little travel Bible, and said, no one any funny business. I said, you won't get any from me. <laughs> she said, I want to learn to read the Word of God. Wow. And so that was my privilege within the Peace Corps that was totally unexpected. Absolutely. A uh, high school teacher, you have a degree in social policy. Is yes. that a... That's an English. 
that's I in, haven't heard of that here. That's right. It's um, it's a postgraduate degree, as they say in England. That's my master's in working particularly with special needs children and looking at government policy and health care in a number of countries and how we serve our families or don't, as the mm -hmm. case may be. Mm -hmm. Yes. All right. And um, you're a member of two churches, mm -hmm. one in Florida and one in the UK. That's right. And uh, you teach um, in maybe both churches uh, on divorce and separation, You've written two books, one called Parents on the Move and this newest one, um, Beyond Broken Families, which we will talk about. First of all, I guess because my mom was born there, but I'm mm -hmm. interested in the UK and I hear that Islam is about to take it over. Mm -hmm. I hear that these gorgeous cathedrals in mm -hmm. Europe nobody comes to them or mm. do they sell them? Have they sold them to other mm. religions? It's a very difficult time. Um, I was on a church planting team to the east end of London where in some neighborhoods it's 90 percent Islamic, some 70 and the Iman went to the mayor of London and said you know based on your concept of democracy we would like to have Sharia law there. Well the Bishop of London because there is no separation of church and state the Bishop of London still has jurisdiction and he basically said excuse me definition of democracy based on numbers I'll show you numbers so he sent us as a church planting team into the that section of the east end of London we had a hundred to begin with it's now 300 and that church has already done a couple of church plants but you're right Arlene the the Iman has said that within 15 years, mm -hmm. their goal, because they're very goal-oriented, want to have London totally Islamic and the United Kingdom within e in 20 years. So the church that I belong to, Holy Trinity Brompton, HTB for short, has said, we will not be silent, not at all. And even though, for the most part now, I attend a little Baptist fellowship out on the countryside, our heart is still with our home-based church and where our children go. Mm -hmm. And that's HTB, that it's looking at churches that some people say are dead or dying, and they go and buy them and bring in a new plant. And so HTB is on church plant number 30-something. It sounds like a wonderful plan. Mm. However, <laughs> yeah. I have read that Europe is about a zero population growth mm. and uh, the Islamic people, mm. they have huge families yes. yeah. and <clears throat> so the future doesn't look that great. You know, um, Destiny Image in the United States is a, a publishing company. Mm -hmm. And just like churches do church plants, they have done a publishing plant for born-again Christians publishing God's Word. And so Beyond Broken Families was published by Destiny Image Europe, which is now called Evangelista Media, mm -hmm. or EM for short. Mm -hmm. And they will tell you that in Italy, there's almost no chance of recovering the population now mm -hmm. because people are only having one or oh, two yeah, children. Oh, yeah, abortion is just, just the greatest <laughs> gift. <laughs> to women, at least mm. that's what our politicians tell us here in the United States. May the Lord have mercy. Amen. All right, I want to talk to you about this book, uh, Beyond Broken Families, and you tie in Ezekiel's mm. vision. Now, um, for full disclosure, you were married for 27 years, that's and right. the book indicates there was violence yes. and everything else. Yes. Uh, 27 years and so I was rescued by <laughs> what we call in England my vicar or my pastor and apparently my mother unbeknownst to me and my former husband's mother had gotten together and said if I didn't know how to rescue myself which indeed I didn't they were going to come and mm -hmm. get me but our vicar rescued me now how does how does Ezekiel tie into this uh -huh. I was a student at LL Ministries and LL has about 30 locations around the world and indeed one has come to America now which is like a, a teaching hospital for people that are on emotional recovery and when I was in a class one day Jill Southern a marvelous teacher stood up and opened up to Ezekiel and read the entire Ezekiel 34 and I was blown away because you see in those days 
when I went through my, what the Queen calls, Annus Horribilis, yeah. I think I had three in a row, um, they didn't know what to do with someone like me. Here was a born again Christian. I have, we did our family ancestry, 500 years of unbroken Christianity, and yet I was broken. Mm -hmm. What would you do with someone like me what in do leadership? What do do with you? Yes. What do you do with me? And they didn't know. When my son had cancer, they knew how to do a fast. But this social cancer of families falling apart, whether or not you have the divorce certificate or not, in the Hebrew they call it the get, whether you have any of that or not, when a family is destroyed, what do we do? And it seems the shepherds of this day, or in particularly 10 years or more ago, mm -hmm. didn't know what to do. And suddenly we have these verses that says, woe to the shepherds of Israel who do not rescue my people. And I'm serious about my people. And I just knew he loved me. And uh, let me say how she breaks this down in this book. It's uh, really worth having. I think we'll put her website up. We'll leave it up. And uh, you can get the book through that. And there's other outlets, Absolutely. Amazon and yeah. all those. Hopefully through you. Uh -huh. Yes, right. ma'am. Mm -hmm. um, now, you had this dream of mm. a wonderful family. I think, I think most women do. Mm. And it crashed. And you fled to America mm. and um, brought your pain with you, basically. Mm. Unless people have been through it, they can't understand no. the pain of uh, divorce. I, I don't know, I think it's worse than death. Yes, when God says he hates it, I get that. Mm -hmm. mm. And um, you encourage people to keep a journal. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'd like to read yours, by the way. Oh. <laughs> uh, because you talked about getting so angry you were throwing plates and, mm -hmm. and this type of thing. Well, well, tell us that story, uh, I think it's pretty interesting. LL does this training day about anger and they start off this amazing woman who is teaching it has this incredibly posh English accent and she says, now we're going to be talking about anger and at the end of the day we've organized some activities for you where you can uh, tear up phone books, stomp on, stomp on things, uh, rip things up, whatever. It'll be a safe place for you to be angry. And I was holding on to the desk totally white knuckled and I couldn't move because always it had been safe for other people to wreak their anger on me. It had never been safe for me. And for all these people to let their anger out, suddenly I didn't feel safe. But one of the things about LO Ministries is someone could recognize someone broken like me. And one of the older ministers went, came alongside me and took my hand and she said, would you like to go outside, Kathleen? <laughs> <laughs> I said, yes, I would. And she just put her arm around me like the mom I needed and let me cry all afternoon. It was only later, as God strengthened me, that I began to say, actually, I don't need to be somebody's puppy that's always kicked, that I'm a child of the living Lord, and he has a plan for me. And on that day, my husband, who I'm married to now for nearly eight years, and is totally born again Christian, incredible man of God, I said to him, I feel the anger rising. And, you know, not about him, but about mm -hmm. previous things. And he went, oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> I said, you know, the spare plates in the, in the you know, the cupboard there? Um, do you think it would go amiss if I had one or two of those? <laughs> he just said, leave us something to have dinner on tonight. <laughs> so I did. I, I threw them out the back of my door. Um, Was this a... Uh in the UK or here? No, I'm in England. I finally... Um, because I've never heard of that in the United no, States. No, that was in England. And as I was tossing the plates, a neighbor or two looked at me and I said, never mind, anger mm -hmm. management, mm -hmm. I'll be fine. <laughs> <laughs> um, the problem is, however you mm. deal with things, they've got to be dealt with before you can mm. move on. Yeah. They've got to. Now, you encourage writing uh, in a journal. I've got a cough, I'm gonna put a cough drop in. Don't let it bother you, it won't bother me. Mm. Um, you encourage writing things down. You know, I asked God, how, how are you gonna heal me? You say, your word says, you're, you're the healer, Jehovah Rapha. I wanna to turn to you 
not someone else, not a whole bunch of other people, unless he directs me there. He's directed us to great Christian therapists, mm -hmm. and that's brilliant because we are people that need wise counsel. Mm -hmm. But at that point, I said, Lord, how are you going to do it? And he said, first of all, music. And he began drawing me back to music, to listen to music. He showed me my rebellion came with, against my musician mother, and that's where my rebellious heart just came in and needed sorting. Mm. And then it was writing for me. But I think one of the central messages for this book, and it's a challenge that I would, I'd like to put out there for everyone to get this book, is that I felt the Lord was saying, whether it's music for you or writing for you or drawing for someone else, it would be a worthy cause to take a year and have a sabbatical. Let's bring that old fashioned word back in and say, over the course of a year, let's take time out from busyness. Let's take time out from anything other than what I direct you to. And in that sabbatical, I'll give you a vision. I'll give you the vision for your life and what you're meant to do. And that's where I came back. I started the sabbatical that's here what they call in a, Venice. A gap year. A gap year. In, in Great Britain. And, yes. And students will take that between high school and college sometimes. Yes, there are many times now it's after college because the world's not as safe. And it's not a, no. not a bad idea. And it's a great year. But it's, you called it a stand in the gap year, which I is did. great. Yeah. That is great. That, that is excellent advice. And that's for healing and, and uh, restoration. But, but it doesn't mean that at the end of the year, your whole life is solved. No. What it meant was he told me my course, that if I'd gone down the wrong road, he was like, back here, Kathleen, let's go back here and let me give you a picture of what this road of no compromise, but it's so incredible healing. And I'm so excited about it because so many people have been where I have been mm -hmm. or are now where I have been. And it's serious good news. Mm -hmm. Um, this book could be used in singles ministries, yes. right? Just yeah. as a guide. Absolutely. For sure. Um, you talk about the danger of self-pity. Mm. I think that nothing could be more right on. Yeah. What, what a waste of time. Yeah. And unforgiveness. You are, yeah. it's, uh, got some great guidance in there on unforgiveness and when I meet people like that who just mm. refuse to forgive or they've got this grudge, my question is why do you give that other person that power? Yes. Because right. they own you. That's right. The person you do not forgive owns you. They do. You. They mm -hmm. do. Yeah. They'll order your day. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. They're your alarm clock in the mm -hmm. morning and they are with you and you... Your whole focus. Mm -hmm. It's mm -hmm. how your day will be carried yeah. out. Now yeah. you also deal with here because we're really just skipping over this yeah. because of a time. Um, you have something in here called the wall of hostility. Mm. I assume that's something that maybe everybody has coming through this and you need to break it down? Yes, and I have to say it's one of the biggest surprises because people think that when they forgive someone, oh, it's going to be fine. Mm -hmm. It's going to be absolutely mm -hmm. heaven. And they're so surprised and they're shocked that what meets them right in their face is this wall of hostility. Mm -hmm. Ezekiel talks about this too. And the thing he asks us to do, this prophet who really did hear from the Lord, who was at a time where everyone was walking around saying, oh, God said this and God said that. And if you're ever in your pit, you'll have so many people at church and other places saying, God said this, God said that. So I love Ezekiel mm -hmm. because he <clears> says, oh, hold on. This is the word of the Lord. Mm -hmm. And he says, don't whitewash that wall. Recognize that it's there. In mm -hmm. workshops, I sometimes get out Duplo pieces mm -hmm. and say, put a label on each brick. You, though, have got to realize you cannot mm -hmm. break down that wall because in Ephesians, Jesus says, that's my job. Mm -hmm. I break down the wall of hostility and he does it brick by brick. I have a family member right now mm -hmm. that I'm praying for because he's in the far country and I know there's mm -hmm. a wall. Lord, tell me what the names of the bricks are. Mm -hmm. And then Lord, how do I pray? I had to totally get rid of the fact that I thought I knew how to pray for that person. I haven't a clue, mm -hmm. but God can tell me how to pray for every brick in that wall. And then when Jesus brings the wall down, only then do you step into what in the next part of Ezekiel 34 talks about, which is the high healing pasture. 
and it's a place just for you for healing from the damage, the wounding, and your own sin. I hope you'll write down that. Uh, I just I just forgot that Ezekiel Ezekiel, Ezekiel. the thirty fourth chapter. Yeah. Absolutely. Go read, go read that. We only have a couple minutes left. All right. Uh, one of the last things in your book was a friend who's so in love with God, mm -hmm. and and she's dating a guy who's. Um, not yet divorced and coming out of rehab. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> Please don't drag God into things that he would never have anything to do with. If, mm. uh, you don't go with people who are married. Period. No, no. Ever. Yeah, ever. That's right. They say, well, we're separated. No, 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 no. They, no, they got no, a covenant. No. And one of the reasons is, you know, Satan's a legalist. He'll, get, he'll take any door you give him. Mm -hmm. So shut that one firmly. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I know. Um, <clears throat> I used to teach a single Sunday school mm. class and and I could tell right where they were in recovery mm. and uh, so many of them would try to drag God into something that he would never, never, ever touch. Uh, in the last minute, can you tell me just some of the victories you've seen in this ministry because it's, yes. it's not an easy one. It's not an easy one, but it's a walking with someone ministry. Mm -hmm. I love speaking, I love teaching, mm -hmm. um, and I enjoy women's ministry, I'm passionate about it. Mm -hmm. But to me the healing we celebrate in the small steps as well. When someone turns their focus from mm -hmm. the person they won't forgive, mm -hmm. that says, we had a victory the other week where someone just said, oh, it's taken me years, but I've finally become willing to be willing to forgive. Mm -hmm. But then the biggest journey the, the greatest one is when a woman says, you know, I will stay, I will not run, but I mm. will not be silent for learning how to be a real helpmate for my husband. Amen, that's good. And we are out of time, but don't forget that Jesus came to bind up the wounds mm. and to heal the brokenhearted. If that's where you are right now, that's where he is too. Hope you'll join me next time. Remembering there's no higher calling than that of a homekeeper. God bless you. If you would like a video copy of today's Homekeepers program for just $19.95, call 1-800-229-0059 for credit card orders or send a gift of at least $19.95 to Homekeepers, P.O. Box 6922, Clearwater, Florida 33758. Be sure to note the program number which appears on your screen.